I, I think that a major turning point in the acceptance of the purinergic signaling idea, concept, uh, really happened in the early 90s. First of all, uh, people, not our lab, uh, cloned the um, P1 receptors and found that there were four subtypes, A1, A2A, A2B and A3. And they characterized them and they developed, since then, very good selective agonists and antagonists. But it wasn't until 93 when I persuaded my good old colleague, we were students together at King's College many years ago, uh, um, Eric Barnard, who uh, had a very fine uh, record for cloning nicotinic receptors. And I persuaded him, it wasn't easy, to, to see if he could uh, clone and uh, characterize the, uh, the ATP receptor. And he and Webb, his student, and others uh, worked on this and came up with the first uh, ATP receptor, which was P2Y1, a G-protein coupled receptors, typically with seven transmembrane domains, intracellular C, extracellular N terminals. Almost simultaneously, people in San Francisco uh, came up with a P2Y2 receptor, which was different in that UTP as well as ATP was, a, was an agonist on this receptor. So they were the first two G-protein coupled receptors. And a year later, in 94, uh, Alan North and again the people in San Francisco um, uh, came up with the P2X receptor and showed it was an iron channel receptor and it had a very interesting structure, two transmembrane domains, uh, intracellular uh, short uh, uh, terminals, CNN terminals and, and an extracellular loop which had 10 conserved cysteines in it. Later on, in the following years, various labs, including ours and North's lab uh, and others, showed uh, cloned other subtypes. And so there are now seven subtypes of the ion channel P2X receptor, and currently eight subtypes have been defined and characterized of the P2YG protein coupled receptor.